Hi, this is Ella 3320, and now I want to talk to you a little bit about matching kids to books based on interest. I've already talked to you a little bit about matching kids to books based on where they are developmentally. Another matching scheme that I want you all to use when you get into the classroom is thinking about what kids are interested in. So before we start thinking about that, let's talk a little bit about reading interest studies. There are lots of reading interest studies out there that you can go and look at and they work a couple of ways. One way is that at the end of the school year, a school librarian will run a report on book circulation for the year. What they then do is they look at the, um, the top books that were checked out to determine kids' interests. So they do what's called plot manipulation. They create some kind of a table um, where uh, they list some general plots. So um, coming of age or boy meets girl or um, the dystopian novel like Hunger Games or Divergent. Um, they, they list basic plots on the left and then they put an X next to the plots or the characters that were circulated the most, okay? Um, and then uh, they um, tabulate that information. Another thing they do is they collect um, those circulation records and they just put together a list of the books that were circulated or checked out the most um, and share those results. Many librarians are required to do that in districts to send to the director of libraries um, to help with purchasing for the next year. So tap into your librarians and see what kind of interest studies that they've done with the data from your school. Another way that we conduct reading interest studies is by sending surveys out to students in August. Many times teachers do this, but librarians also do it because they're trying to think about what kinds of books do they need to purchase for their library this year. Again, tap into your librarian. They are a wealth of knowledge for you. Great resource for you when you're thinking about what kinds of books do kids enjoy reading? What are they interested in? So this is a name that I want you to take note of, George Norvell. Um, this is a, a man well known um, in the field of children's literature. He served as the director of reading and language arts for the entire state of New York in the 1950s and 60s. And he's kind of known as the grandfather of reading interest studies because Norvell spent his career asking kids, what do they like to read? What do they hate to read? He wrote books about it. He spoke at conferences. He wrote papers about it. A lot of people did not listen to him. Um, they didn't see the value in what he was um, learning from kids. He would uh, put out new results every few years. So people only began, began to become interested in Norvell's research when um, the pendulum in reading and language arts education um, swung to the side of a literature-based curriculum. What I mean by that is that teachers started to see the value in using authentic children's books to teach reading as opposed to um, a textbook or an anthology of stories. If I think about um, when I taught elementary school, there was a textbook that was adopted by my district um, that was filled with poems and stories and that kind of thing, but that's not what I used to teach. Um, what I used to teach reading was authentic children's literature. So when people started moving 70s and 80s toward this kind of pedagogy or methodology for teaching reading, that's when teachers began to become interested in what Norvell was saying. If you're going to use authentic literature to teach reading, you want to make sure that you're using literature kids enjoy. Okay, So um, here's what George Norvell found out. He found out uh, specifically about what kids don't like to read. They don't like to read books that they're taught in school. What that means is books that are taught as a whole class novel. So where everybody is reading the same book and I'm sure you have all experienced that. Um, the implication um, is that um, kids have a reaction to how we teach whole class novels. Many times teachers choose a whole class novel not because it's something everybody's interested in but because it's something that they have a huge file folder full of stuff that they can do. Word searches, crossword puzzles, dioramas, quizzes, okay? What we know is that lifetime readers don't read that way. 
I would consider myself a lifetime reader. I read all the time. I want you all to be lifetime readers if you're not already. But by if, if you're not already, I want you to be that by the time you finish this course. Um, so what we know about lifetime readers, Donald and Miller calls them readers in the wild, is that when they finish a book, they don't go to Barnes and Noble and ask for the quiz. They don't create a diorama of it, okay? The joy of reading is in having free choice. That's the implication of what Norvell found out. Okay? So when we think about matching kids to books based on their interests, one of the things you can do in your classroom is um, administer what's called a reading interest inventory. A reading interest inventory is designed to find out who the student is when they are not in your classroom. Who is that student when they're not with me? It's another way of saying what are they interested in? Not what are they interested in reading, what are they interested in? What do they do outside of my classroom? There's all kinds of examples out there of reading interest inventories. You can go on Google and Google a million of them. Some are aimed at primary students, early elementary, some are for intermediate and middle, some are for high school. We all have our favorites. I have found some on the internet that I have modified for use before, uh, but there's some things you want to keep in mind. If you're talking about using a reading interest inventory with a primary level student, you want to talk to the students. We're talking kindergarten, first and second grade. Um, I've included some examples of a primary interest inventory inside Blackboard uh, that I'd like for you to take a look at. But with primary level students, ask them the questions verbally and then allow them to talk through it. Best to do this one-on-one -on -one, um, and you want to take down what they say. Okay? The rule is constantly push to get a concise answer. Get as specific as you can. So for example, do you like sports? Yes. What kind of sports do you like? I like football. Don't stop there. Okay, keep going. What's your favorite football team? Who's your favorite player? What position do you like to play? Let's say you ask them, do you have any hobbies? Yes, I like to dance. Don't stop there. Ask them, what kind of dance do you enjoy? There's a big difference between ballet and hip hop. Heaven forbid they like ballet and you give them a book on hip hop dancing. Okay, so you constantly want to get a concise answer. The inventory is only as good as it is specific. When you're talking about intermediate students and, or older, have the students write their answers first. So make copies of your interest inventory, distribute it, have them write their answers. Maybe they take it home and do some writing on it and bring it back. And then what you want to do is find some time to confer with each student about their answers individually. Push them to think deeper, to get more concise and specific. Again, the answers on that inventory are only as good as they are specific. Okay. So now that you've conducted these interest inventories, what do you do with them? Well, what you want to do is keep them for yourself. That's data for yourself. Okay. That's, that's some information you can use. When you take your kids to the library, take your stack of inventories with you. Maybe keep them in a binder. Um, when a student's having a hard time finding a just right book, pull out that interest inventory that they completed and have a conference with them. Talk to them about, you know, here are some of the things you wrote down. Let's see if we can find some books here. Okay, so that's how, that's how you want to match kids to books based on interest. We'll do some work in class with some interest inventories, but I want you to have this basic information first. So now we've talked about the matching scheme of using developmental theories to match them to books, and the second matching scheme is using their interest to match them book, to books. We have one more that we're going to talk about in the next video.